Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. This week, Jada Pinkett Smith, or should I say, just Jada Pinkett, has been all over the place just spilling the tea. First, Jada said that her and Will Smith have officially been separated since 2016. And then, Jada said that back in the day when Chris Rock heard rumors that her and Will were potentially getting a divorce, Chris Rock called her up on the phone and tried to kick it to her. Jada said, quote, Chris, he thought we were getting a divorce, so he called me and basically was like, I'd love to take you out. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, well, aren't you and Will getting a divorce? I was like, no, Chris, those are rumors. He was appalled and he profusely apologized and that was that, end quote. See, now the Oscar slap is starting to make a little bit more sense. Cause you don't call another man's wife because you heard rumors that they might be getting a divorce and try to kick it to her. Especially if you and that man run in the same circles. I mean, what was Chris Rock thinking? Well, you know something? We all know what Chris Rock was thinking, but you know what I mean. Well, anyways, Jada Pinkett's stories after that seem to get a little bit more bizarre because now Jada Pinkett is talking about the fact that back in the days in Baltimore, she used to be a serious drug dealer. Jada Pinkett said, quote, drugs were going to touch you, period. You could use them or you could sell them, but there was no being in an environment like that and drugs not touch you. And I'm not saying it's right, of course, now being in a whole different mindset, but when you're living in a war zone and you just thinking about survival, I wasn't trying to use drugs. I surely wasn't going to be a drug dealer's girlfriend, but I wanted money so I could be independent. I wanted to take care of myself. I thought I was going to be a queen pin for sure. You get caught up in the scenery. I was rolling with some really high rollers at the time. That's a whole nother Jada. A whole nother Jada that would chase somebody down the alley with a switchblade because they stole $700. Or the Jada who would sell crack cocaine and then get set up and two dudes come in with 9mm and she get a gun put to her head. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the last thing that I thought that I was going to hear when I woke up this morning was that Jada Pinkett used to be a corner boy in b -more, and she was doing hand-to-hand -hand passes with the dime bags like she was Snoop from the wire standing on the block around the clock talking about, yo, 5 -o. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that right there is hilarious. Will Smith done married the Pablo Escobar of b -more. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about Jada Pinkett Smith coming out and saying she used to sell that crack cocaine back in the day. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, peep this. The other day, an internet comedian slash prankster named Christopher Tobias Riley, better known as White Zolomite, posted a video on social media that showed him attempting to prank T.I. Trader Truth King and a friend when they were hanging out in the parking lot. And the prank went really, really left really, really quick when the white prankster approached T.I. and them and referred to them as boys. Check this out. Stop taking these pictures here, boy, in my building. Hey, what are you guys doing here, boy? You are you boy, dressed like boy? Ain't nobody yeah, boy, man. Dressed like Bob the Builder. What you talking about? Boy, what you say, boy? Yeah, yeah, no, the boy stuff, bro. Hold on, hold on, man. But it's that, a prank, bro. But we don't it's prank with the boy with it's the racist. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know what you're trying to do, go Bob. I, I, I'm, I'm, we on positive vibe. It's a prank, it's a joke. Look. If this how you trying to go viral, bro, that shit get your ass hurt out here, man. No, it's you just can't cut. Hold on, bro. And I ain't belt. nobody's boy, man. <laughs> go about your business, man. It's What's your name? White Dolomite. This ain't the way to go about it, bro. Right. God look. bless you, brother. Peace yeah, be you. unto you. Yeah. All right, man. Listen, something about that whole thing just doesn't seem to sit right with me. And I think that that whole thing was scripted. Let me know what you think. Do you think that that whole interaction was real or do you think it was fake? Did T.I. and M really yoke that man up or was that just a scam for the gram? Now, check this out. Chicago rapper King Yella has issued a challenge for all of you rappers out there. King Yella wants to know, is it humanly possible for you to create a rap song with a positive message that has no reference to violence? Check out what King Yella had to say. Hey yo, since everybody pushing peace, this for all the Chicago rappers, thugs, whatever y'all got going on. Let's see if y'all can 
make a positive song that's don't consist of gang banging, degrading females, talking crazy, disrespecting. Let's see if we can uplift and make a positive song for the youth, for the for the community, for the hood, everything. Let's see. I'm challenging everybody. Oh my goodness, this right here is music to my ears. Because I don't understand how many pop pop shoot 'em up misogynistic songs one generation of artists can make. And I'd be very interested to see what type of creativity is unleashed once you negate all of the negativity. I mean, hip hop has always had its dark side, but it also used to have a light side too. Do you guys remember Kid and Play, Nice and Smooth, Chub Rock? Bismarck. I mean, we used to have options. You could listen to your Mob Deep, but then you could flip that Max L tape over and listen to your Tribe Called Quest 2. I mean, diversity in music is important, and every song cannot be about gun popping, pill popping, car shopping, bed hopping, and booty popping. Could you imagine if every movie that you saw was only about effing and shooting? And I get it, a whole bunch of people will say, a lot of these artists are only rapping about what they know. But here's the beauty about the arts. You don't have to only rap about what you know. You can get creative with it. You don't have to have been to Paris to write about Paris. You know what I'm saying? Like dude who wrote like Black Panther, guess what? He ain't never been to Wakanda. And George Lucas who wrote Star Wars, he never went to space. And Prince was never standing and laughing in the purple rain. And guess what? Slick Rick's children's story was just that, a story. And what do all of these artists have in common? They were all able to make masterpieces because they got creative with it. They didn't just sit there like, mm, I'm in a mood, I'm in a mood, I'm in a mood. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I'm in a mood after I listen to that crap. I mean, the beat is fire, but Ice Spice must have sat in that studio and wrote them bars with crayons. I mean, what is she talking about? With that being said, I'm very happy that King Yella has issued this challenge to see if some of these rappers out here can think outside the box and write rap songs with a positive message. Listen, let me know what you think about King Yella challenging all of these rappers in Chicago to write a positive song that doesn't have no negativity. Do you think that he's going to have any takers or do you think it's going to be nothing but crickets? Listen, let me know what you think in the comments. And also, let me issue my own challenge. If you think that you're a rapper and you got bars for days because you're a lyricist, do me a favor and drop your best like 8 to 16 bars of nothing but positivity in the comments section below. But while we're talking about rappers getting a little creative, the other day was Cardi B's 31st birthday and Offset went all out for his wife. And I'm telling you, this man right here must have had a coupon for 1-800-Flowers. Check this out. Ah, so this is why you was rushing me to go downstairs and eat. <laughs> oh my good. You gotta know it's okay, you know it ain't your heart. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, this nigga, I swear to God. <laughs> wow. Ah, I love you. Thank you. Seems like it's gonna be his birthday the way I'm like. I love you, I love you. Thank you so much. I don't give a fuck, I'll bite bitches for this man. I will bite you bitches for this man. Hear me, bite ya. I will fucking bite you, bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I love these smell. Mm. <laughs> Yo, can somebody please tell Cardi to calm down and take some time to smell of roses before she starts talking about fighting bees and biting bees over offset? <laughs> <laughs> now, while we're talking about people who are in marital bliss, a 39-year-old woman from Maryland named Andrea Johnson was reported to HR by her co-workers after she got married to herself. 
So this is what happened. Andrea, who was divorced, got tired of being single, so she proposed to herself on Valentine's Day, and then she paid over $4,000 to travel to Tulum, Mexico to get married to herself. During her wedding ceremony, she wore a white dress, red vows, and placed a ring on her own finger in front of a local officiant. She even had a reception where she ate cake and drank champagne and even had a photo shoot. When discussing her marriage, Adriana said, quote, Being married to myself has taught me many things. I've learned that I cannot bring anything to a relationship if I cannot love myself. I put my relationship with myself above everything and work on it constantly. End quote. Now, when Adriana returned home and went back to work, after walking down the aisle and putting a ring on her own finger, she started referring to herself as Mrs. Johnson and requested that her co-workers acknowledge her marriage and do the same. Now, knowing that this chick didn't get married to nobody except herself, her colleagues got angry and dubbed her as a crazy, lonely, and pathetic chick. And they even reported her to the Human Resources Department, which initiated an investigation at work around her mental stability. I mean, honestly, you know, like personally, I would never marry myself because I feel like I would cheat on myself and be very unhappy. But, I mean, if this chick wants to run around saying that she's married, then let her have it. I am quite sure that there are far more crazy people running around at that job than the woman who's a little lonely and really wants to be married. Now, if I turn around and find out that this chick is like filing joint tax returns for her and her spouse and she's getting tax exemptions, then we got a problem. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you would do if you had a co-worker who married themselves and they told you, you better put some respect on my marriage, would you or would you not? Let me know what you would do in the comments. Would you go to HR? Now, check this out. Pretty Boy Floyd has put his money down on the table because now Floyd is sending his private jet, Air Mayweather, to Israel to deliver food and other supplies, including bulletproof vests for the Israeli Defense Force soldiers. Yo, let me know what you think about Floyd Mayweather chipping in to help pay for the war. Now, check this out. The other day, Young Jock was on Vlad TV and he had a warning for Sexy Red. Jock said that Sexy Red better be real careful about promoting the whole spirit. And he also cautioned her about believing the hype. Jock said, quote, she not trying to pretend to be something she's not. I think she's comfortable in her truth, but I think she has to be careful with being exploited. I'm seeing the way she presents herself, and it's not that she don't know better, it's what she's comfortable doing. I'm not knocking Sexy Red. I don't want nobody to think I'm knocking her. I just think she should be a little bit more sensible when it comes to the censorship, because these babies be listening to this ish. You know what I'm saying? Gotta check those host spirits. End quote. You know something? I can really appreciate this advice coming from Young Jock. Because you know what this is? This is advice coming from a seasoned old hoe going to a young hoe. I mean, that is beautiful. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about Young Jock saying a sexy red better be real careful and she needs to check that whole spirit. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.